Well, uh, Andy, I think we're live. There we go. We're on. <laughs> right. Happy Friday. Right. Happy Friday afternoon. Um, got to the end of the week. Fry yay. <laughs> yeah. Mate, uh, got the red wine. Uh, everyone's uh, dialing in. Hopefully it's going live now. Uh, this week we've worked it out, folks, which is good. And um, hopefully we don't have any other glitches this week. But uh, last week we had a bit of a glitch, a little bit late. But uh, we're mostly on time today. Five o'clock. Uh, looks like we're going. And um, which is good. Which is good. All right, we're on. We're online, Andy. We've got a few uh, few people di uh, dialing in, which is great. Damien, Damien's dialed in. How are you, mate? Good to see you. And uh, hopefully, uh, a few more people sort of come on. So anyway, welcome along, folks. Welcome along. Welcome along to the Friday Wine and Wisdom Chat. Andy and myself uh, doing a bit of a debrief on the week that has been. Uh, for those who are dialing in for the first time or those who are listening to the replay for the first time, Andy and I, uh, two professionals from our chosen fields, property, 20-odd uh, years in investing in real estate and finance and mortgages, coaching property investors around Australia and New Zealand. Andy Fenton, 20-odd years plus in the banking, finance world and the share market. So uh, what we have been doing for the last sort of, I don't know, couple of months, two or three months now is... A Friday debrief, and um, uh, we thought we'd uh, add some value if we can with our uh, with our uh, opinions, uh, views on the worlds that we come from, and hopefully people uh, get a chance to um, you know maybe take a little bit of that stuff and turn it into something that they might use in their next week or their next month or even their next year, which is which is kind of good. So both Andy and I love helping people. Um, do what they want to do in the world of property, business and finance. So uh, this is our chance for us to debrief on the week and you guys to sort of maybe get a chance, ask us a few questions. If you're dialed in, I can see your chats coming through, which is awesome. And uh, Andy and I usually have a few things we've picked up during the week we'd like to, you know, talk about and have a bit of a theme on. But uh, welcome along. Thank you, everyone, for dialing in. And uh, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Good mate, you're, you, in mate. A, you're in a t-shirt down there in Melbourne. Um, what's going on? Mate, I've had the reverse <laughs> cycling go, <laughs> going pretty much flat chat the whole day. That's, uh, that's about it, mate, other than it's been, uh, it's been a big week. It's been a... Yeah, been yeah you guys are week. back in lockdown? We're back in lockdown. Uh, that's yeah. not the incredible part about it. But, no. uh, but that's where we started Wine and Wisdom. So that's, Yes, that's, it uh, was. It's, uh, it, yeah, I must admit, it came as a bit of a kick in the teeth to, to many many people down here in Victoria and went out and had uh, had dinner with some uh, some great friends of ours uh, from K2 in, at, at uh, Cozzy. And uh, the beautiful thing about actually catching up with them is is the um, is their temperament and in going into it and their outlook in actually going into this next stage. And well, we've been here before, is, haven't we? We've, we've been here before, well, it's unfortunately. So for hopefully everyone can, uh, you know, take the lessons from last time. And you know what, that, that's really the interesting thing, Jace, is that they took it so well. I mean, there's nothing else you can do and they're, they're solid people. They know that you, know, you can't change it, so you've got, to, you've got to run with it. But understanding, okay, we're, we're actually now prepared for this. And yeah. there was a, 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 an unusual amount of calm and, and um, composure that, that they were actually displaying. And I thought, geez, that's amazing because you, you'd think that they'd be freaking out because I thought for a lot of them and, and as soon as I heard we were going back down into lockout, lockdown I thought I got to get in contact with a few people because I felt like it was going to be the jab the first one and then this was going to be the haymaker that was going to turn around and, and take a few people out but geez I tell you what they, they they said you know we're calm we now know what we need to do we're moving you know demobilizing the kitchen obviously demobilizing the staff and yep. and, and a lot of the, the waiters and waitresses and and so on and so forth yeah. they now know what they need to do and it, and it got me to. thinking is is this you know the new normal of of now we actually know how to contingency plan in business and this whether it's corona or whether it's you know whatever uh is it that we we now have this kind of approach that we we can adapt to the changing environments well you know an unexpected positive side effect right because you know at the end of the day you know, you and I have been in business 20 odd years, um, you know, one way, shape or another. And, um, you know, for as long as I can remember, um, 
you know, uh, business mentors, you know, teachers, coaches have always said, listen, you know, you've got to plan for a rainy day, put some aside, war chests, know your numbers, know your budgets, you know, and to be honest, probably for the first decade of hearing that, I, I gave it lip service, <laughs> you know, you know, it's just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I know. I know. Anyone, anyone know someone who says, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, and then doesn't do it. Um, you know, I knew a guy like that once. Uh, he looked a bit like me. Um, but <laughs> actually a lot Wait, like you're me. a mirror. It's a mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was looking in the mirror. But you know, that's, that's a really interesting point. Um, you know, a, probably a very good side effect of, hey, listen, everybody got a chance, has had a chance to understand how to plan for the worst uh, in business and in, in their financial lives. You know, like when we first uh, went into this, Andy, I remember one of our wine and wisdoms, we said, listen, you know, for the first time ever, you and I have been in the finance space for a long time, 20 years, telling people, you know, most people are about a week away from financial problems. Uh, and, you know, probably for the first time in most people's lives, that was, you know, right in their face. So hopefully, hopefully, I, I, like I, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very optimistic that people will take this as a bit of a lesson and, and go forward and, and be a bit smarter about how they use their money. That's, that's you and I, that's what we like, like to do and, and hope uh, people do. But listen, you know, a few things this week, um, you know, there was a lot of talk in the media, Andy, about the September cliff, um, you know, the media loves to wind up the old machine. They get out there like, you know, and talk and talk and talk about dramas and carry on and whatever. And you and I were chatting last time uh, at uh, Wine and Wisdom and, and you went through the seasons, um, you know, the seasons of stimulus, which were, which were fantastic. And we got some great feedback on that. So if you guys didn't see last week's, jump on and have a look. Andy, Andy did a great debrief. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I said back then, you and I were talking about this is, you know, we find it hard to believe that the government would put all this effort and time uh, into sort of, you know, helping people initially. And then all of a sudden, all right, September 1, good luck, everyone. You know, uh, tomorrow, today I'm helping you, but tomorrow, you know, fend for yourself, right? You know, and, and already uh, since, you know, you, you and I have been saying it actually for weeks and weeks, but already the banks have come out and they said, right, gang, we're going to extend yep. the mortgage pause for those who qualify for another four months, just Straight off the bat, you qualify, you get another mortgage pause. Uh, and already the government has said, listen, we're, we're putting together a plan now for, you know, a, an adjustment of the, uh, of the JobKeeper, not like a shut off, you know. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense that the government would just go like that overnight, you know. So, you know, uh, it, it, you know, if it wasn't for the media, we probably wouldn't have anything to talk about on Fridays, to be honest. So, you know, <laughs> I should be grateful for them. But, you know, gee, they carry on like pork chops and like to dramatise. Um, but, you know, that's uh, that's the way it is. But, but mate, uh, you know, a few things from uh, my neck of the woods, you know, this week uh, in the world of, uh, you know, real estate, 11-year uh, lows, 11-year low in uh, approvals across Australia. So, um, and you know, I've been saying this for months. Matter of fact, I've been saying it for nine months before COVID. Uh, construction uh, approval lows um, are at, you know, decade lows. So, and it's going to continue to go down. So, you know, what's that going to mean for us as property investors uh, at some point? I think sort of late 2021, 22, maybe even 23, there's going to be some significant pressures in the property marketplace for um, supply issues. And um, it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. I don't think it'll be, um, I don't think it's going to blow up until the government turns back on um, immigration. So that might be, you know, 2022, 2023. Um, but uh, to be honest, uh, it's still going to be a major issue. It's going to be my prediction. I think I've said it already is late 21, 22. You'll, you'll see the headlines, all time lows, all time Australian lows when it comes to approvals and production of uh, real estate into the system. So that's okay. my call on it. Wait, what date was that? I'm going to put it in the I, calendar. I reckon, give me March, 2022. Right? I reckon that's when, because it'll be that quarter, right? It'll be that quarter where March they March the nineteenth, twenty twenty-two. 
That's and, it. Uh, we'll put a bottle of wine on it because that's well, all right. Place. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. All time <laughs> lows. All time lows. I'm picking it now. <laughs> Happy to jump on the other side of that bet. Well, uh, it'll be a nice bottle of wine. Absolutely. Yeah, mate. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, a few things uh, moving this week. Uh, like I said just, last just week, I think. That, mate, yeah. Before, uh, before you duck forward, because there's a couple of interactions and uh, and one one which you you know quite well. Uh, that I had, but I haven't spoken to you about the circumstance. I won't use names, but we uh, we had a look at a portfolio and on an LVR basis, well, I was just making the assumptions. I'm like, oh, this is underwater. And uh, and I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, okay. So just because my brain was calibrated to X percent uh, interest rate, X percent yield yeah. equals a, an LVR, in my head, that was going to break even. And this is the first time that I properly looked at it because it, it just didn't twig in my head yet. And and the person turned around to me and they've gone, uh, but it's paying for itself. And I'm like, hang on, fuck it, it's what? <laughs> like, it's underwater. The LVRs are all banged up. It's well above 80%. And yep. they said, but I'm not paying anything out. And I said, do your math again. I, got the, I do it. There's the spreadsheet. And... I was flabbergasted. I actually didn't know what to say for a couple of minutes. I was just sitting there going, that is amazing. Mate, it, it's crazy at the moment like that, yeah? I didn't take into consideration, even though you've talked about it a lot, I didn't take into consideration the drop in interest rates. Uh, and even one more recently, I think that is 100% geared and it's cash flow positive. Well, mate, um, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. I, 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 did, I did some stuff for people. All right. Who, who remembers... 2000. Anyone remember the 2000s? You know, the, yeah, the I was a teenager. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it it wasn't it wasn't un, inconceivable that you could get a five hundred thousand dollar loan in 2000, right, Andy? If we were going back to 1970, it'd be maybe inconceivable. But but I was living in I was living in Sydney, and people were buying houses for you know four or five hundred thousand dollars in Sydney in the year 2000. Right. Okay. So. Um, Oh, here's a pop quiz for you, Andy. How much? What? What? What was the interest rate in in the year two thousand, Andy? All right, like, like year two thousand. Uh, so twenty years ago, are you talk, which interest rate are you talking about? The cash rate. The cash rate, I reckon, would probably have been about seven percent. All right, mate. You're pretty close. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one for you. I won't I won't put you. Won't hang. So year two thousand, seven point eight percent. You can get a principal interest loan over a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Uh, that would cost you three thousand six hundred bucks per month twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, all right, not too bad, all right. Was was you know, it was, it was probably a bit more than the normal twenty years ago. Probably a bit high, but you know, I, I could we could go forward. Um, uh, where was it? Uh, twenty ten. Let's do twenty ten. Only a decade ago, seven point four percent. Okay, twenty ten is probably a bit closer. A uh, Principal instant mortgage, principal instant mortgage, five hundred thousand dollars, seven point four percent, three thousand four hundred sixty-two dollars per month. There you go. All right. So, what do you reckon today? So here's a question for you, Jace. Yeah. Quiz. What What was it in two thousand and eight? <laughs> oh, oh, you, you you got me in the gap. I I didn't do it year <laughs> ending. <laughs> it was off the charts, mate, because the cash rate was about seven percent. But the, yeah. the, the margin was a lot smaller from so, what the banks were getting money and what they were lending it at. Well, so, let's let's have a look at this, right? So our rate, 10 years ago, 7.4%, $500,000 loan, $3,462. Uh, today, $2,177 per month, average... Three hundred three point two five percent. Do you want to know something funny? Look at about that. Look, look, three thousand four hundred, two thousand one hundred. It's bloody cheaper right now to have a mortgage than it was ten years ago. Ah, uh, and to buy a house. <laughs> so check check this one out. Uh, so on that, you said two thousand and ten, didn't you? I said two thousand and ten. Put yourself yep. in the picture in so, the corner there, Andy. Oh, sorry, mate. I uh, I whack myself in the corner. Nobody puts Fenton in the corner. <laughs> no one puts baby in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoops. Have a look at this. And uh, 
for some reason it's not allowing me to use my mouse but right here right so 2010 yeah which is basically where you're talking right yeah. so it's, it's it's smack bang here that's if we take that across and trace that across we're looking at uh that is the the cash rate that's actually the cash rate where wow. the government or the the reserve bank of australia lent money to the banks and that's what you're actually getting mortgages at and and cheaper than that right now yeah yeah wow well there you go mate listen you know it's interesting times like, like you know like i've been saying right now unless unless someone's got you know a real disaster on their hands i think it's insane for people to sell property right now and 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 be worrying about oh you know september's coming and that sort of stuff like you know the message for me right now is you know that's insane you it's not a great market for selling right now. Uh, the, the, the stimulus is on brand new properties for the moment. So there's a huge amount of buyers. It's kind of like this have and have nots in the, in the real estate market right now. If you've got a secondhand property right now and it's a bit tired and you're trying to sell it, it's not a great time to be doing that. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I did see some stats today um, um, from our, very good friend Tim Boyle. I don't know if he's joined us tonight, but um, you know, um, <laughs> Tim, he, our unofficial stats guru. He's my, he's our supplier. He's my supplier. He's fantastic with the stats. But you know, um, you know, the, the listings are quite high at the moment in comparison to you know um, a while ago. Um, and uh, you know, I wouldn't be selling secondhand property right now if I if I didn't have to, especially when interest rates are so low especially when if you are COVID affected, if you are genuinely affected with your income, your business, your job, you can pause your mortgage. And by the end of this, it'll be a mortgage pause for between 10 and 12 months. You will not have to pay your mortgage. Um, insane. And so, you know, at the end of the day, if anyone is feeling pressure right now, you should be reaching out to, to someone like myself or Andy and getting some coaching because the reality is you can manage this well if there's financial pressure on you, even from your business, your mortgage or whatever it might be. And like Andy was saying before, it's time now in the season of stimulus to get yourself organized. If you hadn't had a chance before, it's a great time to do it now. So, um, you know, um, you know, that's, that's my encouragement for most people. Don't be selling if you don't have to gang. Um, so we've had a few shout outs from, from Alison and um, Nicole uh, Trish, Brian, uh, good to see you back, Brian. Great, great to chat to you the other day, mate. Um, everyone's uh, everyone's uh, cheersing us on our wine, Andy. So, mate. Uh, so, what's going on in your neck of the woods, mate? What do you got for us this week? Uh, well, we've got the... we've got Mr. Marriott, who's uh, who's saying two thousand is the uh, Euro Trance Ministry of Sound album. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I, we might have been doing two two different things back then, uh, mate. But. Uh... <laughs> but I love it nonetheless. So I'm going to give you yeah. a big old thumbs up down here and uh, and do the same with us so we can see that you're there. Uh, and if you've got any questions, whack them through because we always we always save this till the end. We say, send your questions in at the end. But if you've got questions as we go along, send uh, them through now. Know. Yeah. But uh, I hope I can get my pen working here, mate, because uh, w going, going on from last week where we did the, the seasons of stimulus, uh, I still, I want to, chat a little bit about that but I did some research during the week and I'm not sure if I shared this one uh, last uh, last week with everybody and uh, let's see if I can get the, the old pencil working that sounds bad doesn't it um, so <laughs> this is especially so this for is, a 40 year old bloke mate <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you to, to our friends at, um, yeah. at, at Hill Estate <laughs> And so this is, this is something which I used to talk about some time ago, and this was a CPA presentation, the same one that I drew the other information yeah. about. It's now almost 15 years old. So these are, when we talked about the seasons, typically in economic cycles, these are the different types of assets that you get into in different times. And so we can see here in, um, in, in spring, Right when everything's growing, when the, the buds are blowing and the and the uh, and the, the flowers are blo blooming, we're in growth style stuff like shares, private equity, infrastructure, commodities, emerging market equities. That's when we're about to really hit a good good summer. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's when things are really really picking up. 
And then we hit summer and it's all about real assets. So real estate really booms through here, boom, far, farmland, gold, which is a really interesting one because most people don't actually think that gold is something that you pick up in summer. Most people think you pick it up in autumn or winter, mm. which, is, uh, which is really interesting because that is not what the actual trends say. And I know that, uh, I know that Mr. Marriott is a big fan of the old gold. So open to see whether I'm wrong on that one, but this was 15 years ago, but uh, it's based on probably about 40 years, 50 years worth of research. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was talking about the various different seasons, right? And the question is, are we going to follow the normal economic cycle that tends to go from spring to summer to autumn to, to winter? Uh, and of course, in autumn, what you're looking at is you're looking at cash, you're looking at hedge funds because markets are, are turbulent, potentially going down, which means you've got long and short positions in the market. Alternative assets, which could be real estate, uh, certainly, if you're talking residential, uh, that, that would be an alternative asset class. And then if you end up in winter, which is deflation, then uh, you, you're basically sticking your money in the bank and, uh, and those sorts of things. So uh, in doing some further research, this is where we were, right? So I just want to provide some context as to how freaking bizarre uh, some of this is. And I then want to really condense it down from a market's term to how simple it is. Um, and it's so simple, it's stupid. Most people will say markets are terrible, but the biggest market in the world, this is a US S&P 500. Yeah, right. It's actually up 5% for the year. No. Yep. <laughs> the last 12 months, up 5%. From the bottom, it's up 40%. Wow. Which is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we talked about, but so what I wanted to chat about, and this is, so all of this I gathered from Morningstar research. I'm not plagiarizing by any stretch of the imagination. But if, if we have a look here, the blue line is the, the, the American market. So the first one, we've, we've, we've looked at it in market segments, yeah. right? Because there's always people who, who win and there's always people who lose, right? And, and in, within markets, there's markets that wins and uh, markets that lose. And within markets, there are winners and losers within markets. Right, but uh, if we have a look at here, materials, not a huge difference, down a fair, down a little bit, uh, as you can see, and, and oil sort of is not materials, oil's in energy. So materials is actually still lagging a little bit, but still reasonably in here. Uh, when we have a look at uh, the consumer cyclicals, so consumer cyclicals are a, sort of the, the Woolworths, it's the, the consumer staples, it's all the things that we buy into retail, all of that sort of jazz. So yeah. Actually, it's increased uh, over in the US, which again is kind of a bizarre energy stocks down low. Now, that's this is where oil is coming in, but it's also just your normal energy trade at the moment. So there's a big opportunity in, in energy. Well, I suppose so, if yeah. people are sitting around, you know, at home, they're not driving, are they? So you'd, you'd, you'd think that, you know, and yeah, at the end of the day, don't, don't let your machine go flat, Andy. Um, and. Um... <laughs> <laughs> my pencil's not working. My machine's going flat. What the hell's going on? Mate, mate, you need an overhaul. Um, you know, at the end of the day, mate, I mean, what, what, what do you think this is? I mean, really, at the end of the day, you know, is it, is it uh, bravado with these economies? You know, like, oh, we'll be right. You know, let's get, let's get the nation working again. Or is there fundamentals in there? I, I think there's fundamentals. That's what I'm about to get to. And this one's for you, mate. In the US, this is real estate. All right, so real estate's actually down over in the US. Yeah, right. But what I wanted to allude to here from your side of the equation and see, uh, oh, and of course, the big winner, that's tech. Tech. All right. Oh. And so tech started higher, it never got as low, and now it's getting even higher. My Lord. Uh, but when we looked at the, the property space, and this is the part that, that I wanted to throw back to you later on. Yeah. This is really interesting because this within markets, there are markets, right? 100%. And so if we look, so within that property index, which was down, we've effectively got industrials over in the US, which hasn't really done a lot, right? So industrials is making machinery, plant and equipment, all of that sort of jazz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Self-storage, probably on the back of a few people having to shift homes and things like that. So yeah. it, it's still up there. The A REITs, which are just the big stocks, right? Healthcare. Healthcare real estate's actually down, which is a little bit of a surprise given that. Yeah, that surprises me, that one. Yeah, yeah. But here's, here's the really interesting play because you've got your malls and you've got your hotels. Ah. And you kind of think, well, makes sense, the, right? 
they're not going to go away and they're going to change. And we saw some stuff in the, in the, um, uh, in the press recently about Chadston Shopping Centre, which is getting totally remade to, to some, and they're spending a huge amount of money. And what I know about the people who sit behind it is that they're not, they're not idiots. These, these people are very, very smart with their money. We're talking about some very big family money in Australia. So obviously w within cycles, there, there are cycles. And I guess that when it comes back to what you were talking about um, earlier on, whoops, I've gone to the wrong view here. When it comes back to what you were talking about earlier on, is it driven by fundamentals? You can see that that market kick has been substantial, but it hasn't gone past where it was previously. Yeah. But if you think about, and, and I think that it's as simple as this, they have pumped a trillion dollars, over a trillion dollars into the US system, a trillion dollars worth of funds. We've, we've put a quarter of a trillion dollars into, into Australia in stimulus. Yeah. And if you actually have a look at how our markets have calibrated based on the stimulus, then you can kind of go, well, yeah, more money floating around the system. It kind of makes sense that it's going to fight. It's like, it's like water on a tray. It will find a point of where it feels comfortable. It'll gravity feed to where it needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the only thing that we can put in markets at the moment. And, but based on that, Morningstar research actually came out and said that their GDP figures for the US, and I'm not sure if I've actually got these in here. I meant to put them in. But the GDP figures for the US, obviously this year are going to be down reasonably significantly. Uh, and I don't actually have it. But next year, though, so down this year, five point, I think it was 5.4%, uh, negative 5.4% GDP. Next year, they're, they're looking at a 5 to 6% GDP, followed by a 3, followed by a 2.5. Mm. Now, these guys are fairly onto what's going on. And... I'm wondering whether, because I haven't quite figured it out yet, and I'll be honest, but going back to our story about our mates at COSI and them innovating and becoming more efficient and becoming faster, and I was chatting to another uh, client today that we're just, we're, I think we're almost going to get to a new normal where we're used to legislation dropping faster, things happening quicker, and business just evolving in a way that would leave the past behind. Well, I mean, so, I mean, example for that sort of stuff, Andy, is like, you know, in, in, in my world, um, you know, for, for a long time, you know, we've been uh, encouraging, pushing, you know, our vendors, our developers, our builders, the people we, we work with, um, you know, to use, you know, DocuSign and technology to exchange contracts. And they've been like Luddites, like absolute dinosaurs for a decade, like just you know, I'm sending it in the post and all this sort of rubbish, right? You know, and, you know, I mean, we launched a, an amazing project down in Melbourne, um, a really boutique little project, and it's had a really good take up. And, you know, for the first time, well, in, in over 10 years, no, over 20 years, it's the fastest um, contract exchange we've, we've ever had in our, in my professional life. Um, the client, got the contract, they sent it to their solicitor, it got completely reviewed, they had their, their, um, their, their chit chat with their solicitor, everything's good, they signed it electronically, five days. Usually that would take between 20 and 30 days to happen. Oh, Australia Post lost my contract, I'll oh, send another one. Unbelievable. Um, so yeah, man, I, like, I, think, I think there's huge opportunities you know, in, in business to be more efficient from here. It, it's kind of like trained everyone to expect something different, right? Yes. Like, and, yeah. and that's what I love. And be ready for the, the contingency plan. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. like you said, and, and I get it, that there are a lot of businesses that weren't prepared for it or just started at the wrong time. Like you, sometimes you can just start at the wrong time. It's not, not your fault. Yeah, but yeah. weren't ready and we're living life a little bit too much in the Ferrari lane instead of in the, the, in the conservative <laughs> lane. Uh, with the old Volvo, Volvo, which is almost the price of a Ferrari these days. <laughs> but they, they're living it too much over there. And, yeah. and, and as a result, this has wiped them out. What it's done is it's opened up market share for more efficient business models of the future. And I think that this is what a lot of the study was done on. It's, it's a huge study, and I'm only a couple of hundred pages into it at the moment. But uh, you know, if, you, if you have a look 
and I've talked about it a lot in the past, is that there there is fundamentally something about the velocity of money and the velocity of information exchange, yeah. yes. which and enables you to have bigger debts and enables companies to grow faster beyond where they uh, rational thought would take them. So can I give you an example? I'm going to put you on the spot and we have a spot. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, no, I, I, I've got some ideas in this space. Yeah, yeah what, what do you got? So what company do we all know? Do we all know that in the last 12 months, we, well, we don't all know this, but what company, and actually let's give, let's give the uh, people out there a little bit of a time to respond. What company in the last 12 months that we all know and most of us love uh, did, I think it was about 208%. 208%. Am I allowed to answer? Yep. I reckon Bunnings. <laughs> I said no and love. <laughs> Don't you know and love Bunnings? I'm there every weekend. I love Bunnings. <laughs> I, I love Bunnings. I'm just not a big fan of their operations. So let, let us know if you know who it is. And so I'm going to start dropping hints to see whether you can pick it because it's not through their increased production. And it jumped this morning. I think about fifteen or twenty percent. I don't know exactly. I'm still, uh, I'm still, still looking at the data on it. <laughs> and uh, and I, we got in a little while ago, uh, just personally. And uh, and I've been. Thinking, it's, I, it's, no, it's a cult stock. I'd call it a cult stock. It defies oh, gravity, and it defies human logic. And this person has led the company to do the same. Apple, t uh, Tesla, um... Tesla, <laughs> Tesla. Check this out. That is Tesla. No. Uh, that is 200%, my friend. 208% over the last 12 months. Look at it. Look at look at April. Look at look at look at this year. Like, yes, it came off a little bit in Feb, but really, it just that's, absolutely took off. That's crazy. It's absolute. Do, do you know how much it's up over the last uh, I think since inception, it's up 500 percent that's that's amazing why that's is it up what's 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 so it is it the personality um i reckon it's the information flow i think that there's a lot to do with the personality he's a very smart individual and i think that he is not in this world personally yeah. the guy is, <laughs> is next level like there is next level um he's definitely the person who's on the spaceship or he's controlling the spaceship that we're all uh, that we're all on but uh yeah they just recently came out and 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 he has been banding around more recently that he thinks he's mastered the, the the final solution to fully automated cars yeah right and i'm i reckon that's the reason why the stock has jumped like it's just gone berserk in the last week or so but my point being is that it's the mobilization of information and it's the mobilization of efficient uh products the other thing about them is they they're getting uh tesla cars to the market faster than anybody thought they'd be able to even with the lockdown in china um so well, I mean, you know, if you think about this now, like, I mean, you, you and I have chatted about this for a while, like, you know, okay, money's got to find a home, right? It, it, anyone who understands money, anyone who's got a bit of money beyond their basic needs, like shelter and food and whatever, anyone who's got like surplus capital, um, you know, ends up asking themselves a the question at some point, oh, uh, what can I do with this money, right? So the smart people end up finding, well, where can I put this cash? What? What can I do? What will I invest in in the future? And right now, you know, like you've said the other day, I mean, you showed that um, stat or the chart, you know, what's the cash rate? It's, you know, or bond. I mean, government bonds are nothing. Like, I mean, you, you wouldn't put your money there. So, you know, where is this money going? And, um, you know, um, anyone with a, a smart green plan for the future, maybe, you know, COVID and, and electrical and stuff, you know, is inspired, you know, a bit of a different thinking, you know, you know, all of those pictures going around you for the first time ever. We've seen the mountains from, you know, places in India, you know, the canals in Venice are clean, you know, like, well, there's I mean, a few, you know, there's a few people in Mumbai said, holy shit. What? There's a mountain up come from? Jesus. You know, I thought it took a thousand years to put them there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at the end of the day, that's interesting stuff, right? Like the speed of information and, um, you know, the distribution of capital, you know, it, one, one thing that actually, on the flip side of that for me, you know, I said it to you um, a few weeks ago about, you know, realestate.com actually providing a platform for the speed of information for real estate, right? Yes, um, yes. And now, like I've, I've seen in the last, you know, three to five years, 
lots of platforms trying to report on real estate like like share markets almost like on you know weekly weekly clearance rates you know monthly supplies and real estate is not that fast like it like its capacity yeah. to clear and and whatever we well, yet yeah, exactly and and you know be very interesting to see the gap so for now but now the gap has some human inefficiencies because people like fall in love with something right so be interesting because you don't you know other than other than a tesla or an apple or something like that in my head if i was a if i was an owner of a share like i'm fully vested in apple i love apple i just you know like you know i've, I've loved it forever i've got every single person in my company on an apple machine we ban microsoft stuff we're like nah get out um, if you're into Microsoft, you don't belong here. We're like we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, <laughs> but I reckon I could get that way about Tesla, you know. Um, but there wouldn't be at this point. I, I couldn't think of any other shares that I would feel that way about. You know what I mean? But a piece and, of real estate, is, I could. You know, this is something that I'm telling uh, clients now to to be aware of. I'm literally, because the speed of information now is so fast that it's not even going to hit the brokers at times. Yeah. And so my uh, my example is Afterpay or Zippay or whichever fucking one it was, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't even know it existed. I'd seen it on the windows of some shops, I think, and I only realized it in hindsight. Um, hey, Camo. And uh, yeah, we yeah we love Apple too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stephanie Fuck, Yes, indeed. But yeah. Uh, I'd only seen it in the corner, but the, it was somebody in retail who brought it to me and said, my God, every second person is coming in here and using it. And and what's happened, and this thing just went poof, like a giant hockey stick curve and uh, made a lot of people a lot of money very, very quickly. Yeah. But so fast that almost the the brokers and the, the, the venture capital out there, to a degree, didn't even see it coming. Missed it, yeah. And so one of the things that I'm... I'm speaking with a lot of clients about is saying, well, take notice, take heed of the shifts that are happening in your industry. If you're in education, look at the educational platforms that are coming up that are building dominance. Yeah. If you're in real estate and you're seeing software take over, you know, property management or blockchain type technologies that are getting adopted on mass, take heed of that because ultimately that momentum is going to get magnified really, really quickly. Hundred percent, mate. I mean, you, you talked about this sort of thing last <laughs> last time we chatted, right? You know, you know how big are these 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 companies, right? Those three, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple, uh, the combined micro cap equals India's GDP. India's GDP. Three companies are as big as a country. Insane, right? Like, how does that get there? Uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not my world, it's your world, but the Afterpay guy, the fastest billionaire ever in history. Yep. The fastest billionaire ever in history. And that, that's... that's well, it, it, we don't know whether somebody became that in blockchain, but certainly the fastest registered <laughs> one. There might <laughs> the have been a few one. arms dealers <laughs> that, uh, that, that reached a little bit faster. Yeah. Than him. Well, you know, the ones that registered the, the cells in the magazine, right? Uh, but, you know, um, well, but here, you know, I've got, I've got a couple of questions from Brian um, tonight and he's sort of saying, you know, how do you, how do you value this tech stuff, Andy? Like wh where would you sit in, in the world of tech and, you know, is it overpriced? You know, is there still value in 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 the tech stuff? And you know, after chatting with you last week and many other occasions, I I personally feel quite bullish in in, in this space to go. Like, is there such a thing as blue chip tech? You know, like in you know, for the last twenty years, I've heard of blue chip shares. Yeah, you buy banks and you buy BHP, and that's about it in Australia. But you know what? Where where would you sit in this? Yeah, look, you, you definitely got blue chip tech, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so on on my pitch, you've got Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple. Yeah. Right. And and these guys are they're 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 the ones that are driving it, right? They're absolutely driving the Huge. the, the I'm not sure if it's in this article. Uh, biggest five stocks 
Uh, but they, they make up a massive part of the index. Oh, cookies notice. Get rid of you. Um, but uh, the, these are your blue chips. But your Microsoft, it doesn't j jump out of its lane too much. Uh, your, your Apple doesn't jump out of its lane too much. You, your Amazon, Google, and your Facebook, look, they're in everybody's face. Yeah, uh, yeah. And everybody's place. Like if you've got a good business model, these guys are looking at how to, to take it over. And, and I've got no doubt in my mind that these, you know, the, these five companies will gobble up a huge amount of technology as we go through. As I think last time when we spoke, Amazon had uh, acquired Zooks, which was the, the yeah. headline uh, a manufacturer in fully automated cars run yes. with the CEO from Australia. Yeah. So they're obviously making a play for that. I mean, I've just bought things on Amazon online recently and, and revisited potentially getting Prime now because Prime covers, you know, television and shows and Prime is now advertising on mainstream television. They're advertising on each other's channels. So, uh, and the, the Australian government has come out and basically said that they want to try and tax uh, the revenue that, Facebook and other platforms are getting by using their live platforms to stream our media. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's the kind of impact that some of these companies are actually having on the revenue of, of Australia. But so are there blue chip tech? Yes, there is. There's these guys. Are they overvalued at the moment? Probably. But what is overvalued when you consider the potential? And that's what I, coming back to the Tesla, if you put them against Dyna... What, are, what Dyna are these guys produce as a dividend, Andy? Like, is this a dividend play with these types of stocks? Or they're nothing, nothing. No. They're not a dividend play. They're a growth play. No, it's... When you buy these companies, like, there's small dividends, but you're buying the, the future market capitalization of these uh -huh. companies. Uh -huh. So in real estate terms, they're not paying any rent. Yeah. All the rent goes to buy the block next door, to buy the block next door, to buy the block yeah. next door, to form a small city, a small yeah. suburb, to form yeah. a small city... Yeah. To, to form a metropolis like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so the dividends coming out are, are minor and that's because they keep their war chest so full to take advantage of opportunities so they can snaffle yeah. things up. Yeah. So with these guys, this is almost what I'd call a dollar cost average play. And for a lot of our younger clients, and this isn't financial advice, I think this is a bit of common sense, is you, you can't, and I would chuck Tesla in here. I'd actually ch chuck Tesla in here. And I'd go yeah, yeah. You have... As a, not as an older person because there's too much vol potential volatility. These guys could get their knees cut out from underneath them with a bad uh, bad run of press, bad run of a few different things. Uh, you well, could get going to Rogan again and uh, yeah, get a bit loose. Well, you know, Facebook dropped 10% uh, just the other day on the back of... Uh, Spotify? No, it was on the back of their lack of participation in censorship of information uh, based on the Black Lives Matter. And yeah, right. so their major sponsors actually pulled out uh, of advertising on them, which was interesting that the market corrected almost 10% on them. But at the end of the day, th those major sponsors would make up 1% because the be beauty about Facebook model is that they don't have one advertiser. They have every small business from around the globe. They have billions of sources of revenue. Well, I'd say this to my team all the time and I say this to lots of business owners, you know, my business at Positive, you know, mine, Sam, Shay's business at Positive, like we rent our business from Facebook, you know, at the end of the day, you know, whether I like it or not, right now, Facebook gets the majority of my investment in my marketing. Um, it, it gives me the return, it gets me the outcome. Um, but, you know, if Facebook... You know, I, I, I briefed my team the other day. I said, listen, like, don't worry about COVID. COVID's not our problem. What, like, what happens if Facebook, you know, doesn't like us anymore? Like, that's our problem. Tell me how you're going to solve that one. Um, because but, but there's you know, also the flip of that. To shut down, you know, like all sorts of stuff are an issue, right? So <laughs> yeah, but there's, there's the flip side of that is that <laughs> we are the, they are the, 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 the business of a billion people, right? Yeah, yeah. In that if, if anybody has a, a more diverse income stream potential than them, I don't know of who they are. Mm. And that that's what you're buying in that stock price. Yeah, that's actually yeah, yeah. what you're sharing in. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying with younger people these days is that it, it's kind of a dollar cost averaging strategy. You're never quite going to know when these things are going to take off. Yeah. But by actually having a part of that in the portfolio over the longer term, you know, it is likely that these five companies in one way, shape or form, whether they get gobbled up by each other, um, are going to end up basically running the world at some point in time. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's 
it's probably a deep conversation for a for a for a day with a bit more wine, Andy. Like you know, <laughs> you know the old uh, the old uh, Terminator world. Maybe you know you never know. But uh, but at the end of the day, from an investment point of view, um, you know I love the idea. In my head, it's really it really struck a chord. It's really struck home with me when you said, "Well, these these companies are too big for governments to let fail." Um, and uh, you know, that's that's really interesting because you know, Virgin Virgin wasn't big enough or integrated enough into Australian economics for the government to let fail, but Qantas was. You know, you know, like what where you know, if you want to underwrite your risk. You know, like that really struck home to me, you know, in, 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 in that sort of sense. So yeah. Would you chuck, would you chuck the, the likes of Alibaba in there and, you know, a few, you know, it's very, it's very white uh, that uh, <laughs> this, uh, Andy. <laughs> you know? oh, oh, uh, look. You know, uh, listen, I don't know anything about, you know, the, the world of, you know, other, other tech in that space, you know, um, but uh, I'm sure there's well, many bits yeah, of tech, you know, places like that. <laughs> st statistically, uh, it, it should be passed uh, Amazon by a country mob at this point in time, statistically speaking. Yeah, uh, yeah. The reality of it is that it didn't stack up. Uh, well, okay. it hasn't stacked up as yet, but it's the secret quantity, which is China with Alibaba. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, Amazon has gone global. Amazon's taking big risks in many, many, many different countries. And what a lot of people don't uh, understand is that they're also integrating themselves with major A-REIT stocks. So A-REIT stocks in the, in the world are your, yes. your real estate stocks mm -hmm. on the stock exchange, like the people who own Westfield, as an example. Um, so they're actually integrating with some of the biggest uh, real estate companies in the world, across the world, and they, they're doing joint ventures that are, that are developing robo-technology and all of these sorts of things for industrial, uh, industrial, industrial logistical property. So, you know, they're, but they're, they're fed income on a, like, if, if we can play in it, let's, let's grab it, let's, let's dominate in it, and they're, they're really vocal about it. Uh, which is interesting because the the rest of them are a little bit more uh, a little bit more quiet about it. Mate, totally. But but I think that you know summarising it back to to where we were when we started the conversation in around government stimulus is that as if we continue to see the governments around the world and and certainly domestically continue to stimulate and and when we come back into that seasonal conversation about. Uh, business and small to medium business out in Australia, if we start to have a look at those different seasons that we spoke about last week, which is, yeah. uh, which is in here, because I just want to bring it back and we, we've sort of, we've, we've talked about it a lot from the perspective of some very positive stories and some very great sort of stories that, that exist. We have to keep our eye out for these things coming in the Australian economy, because all of these things are possible but you need to be really wary of when the various different things are potentially going to lapse. Because my view is that there's two directions that uh, we're going to go based on everything that we spoke about previously. And for those of you on last week, we showed this graph and basically all of the color parts is when the government turned on the stimulus. All of the gray parts is when the government didn't have a stimulus. And this was after the, the GFC. Um, so if we take that as really the only time that we can put on record that the government have stimulated as much as they have, and we go, okay, well, it's likely to be something similar or a mimic of that situation. As business owners and investors, we, we need to be really careful about July and September from the perspective of listening, what are the governments doing here yeah. and around the world? If they stimulate, is there a big possibility that markets will continue to run? And as a business owner, do I then take that opportunity and can and put the foot down, right? And literally put the foot down and go, you know what? We've got another three months worth of JobKeeper, which allows us to exist in, in sometimes a fantasical world of limitless potential with, very, with, with a cap downside risk, right? Because the cap downside risk is the stimulus. Well, and, and also some of the legislation that's passed, you know, Andy, like you and I have chatted about this before with um, uh, Dermot, you know. Um, oh, so true still. Yeah. 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 So, you know, 
uh, for lots of businesses. I, I've, I've been chatting with many self-employed, you know, small businesses like, you know, um, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but the risk is very low on, on those people right now to actually continue to trade. Uh, if and they trade. got to here. Yeah, if, if they, they got, got to here, here. Yeah. yep. And, and structure themselves correctly to trade into the future for opportunity. Um, and if it doesn't go great, then, you know, the risk is actually quite low, um, if not um, almost zero if you structure yourself properly, according to Dermot. So, you know, uh, catch if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about here, um, we chatted with Dermot um, McVeigh, McVeigh um, about five or six wisdoms of wine ago. Um, check that episode out. It was good. Um, it was. Uh, you, can, you can look it up in Jason's or my thread uh, yeah. in there, Dermot yeah. McVeigh. Dermot and McVeigh. Uh, it talked about Docker and, and what we can do as business owners if we're a little bit... Uh, over leveraged, a little bit overexposed, but we're otherwise good, but we've got a few debt monkeys on our back. Yeah. Uh, there's some incredible gold there and it's still up for grabs. <clears throat> Absolutely. And to kind of top and tail that point here is that I don't believe personally, I don't believe that these red parts here that are meant to finish in September the 27th, I don't believe that they are going to finish. And I heard murmurs, but I haven't heard what uh, Morrison said today. I haven't listened to it, but somebody was saying to me that uh, there was he was talking about the extension of these. The extension of these, if he does it and if they do it, that's stimulus. And from a market's perspective, stimulus means more money in the market. More money in the market means greater potential for markets to continue to go up. Right? Yeah. Because there's more money flowing around the system. If, but eventually that's going to stop, right? And there will be a make, make your, uh, meet your maker day, right? So whether that's here and it goes bang, whether that's, you know, another year down the track and it goes bang, or whether that is two or three years down the track and then goes bang, yeah. each time you're climbing up a scale where the drop is only more significant if you get in just before the drop. But what we need to be aware of both as business owners and investors, sorry about that, the old battery, is when they extend these things and then more importantly if they don't we need to get out plan yes because if they don't extend it as a business owner you you need to know all right i need to put some cash aside to pay the tax that i haven't been paying for the last six months to fully pay all of the employees that i haven't been paying fully for the last six months uh to pay the payroll tax that i haven't been paying for the last six months and there's some real traps in here. And the reason why we keep drumming this home is that it's really easy to get caught in this, uh, in this summer and spring cycle. And most people will sort of say, Andy, it's hardly been summer or spring. Well, I'll say in comparison to what could have happened, right? If they just let COVID hit and they didn't sim stimulate, we'd just be in the darkest winter right about now. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. So what they've created through the stimulus is this kind of bubble right? And we're kind of living in this bubble and that bubble may be extended. And all I'm saying from this is that we need to be aware of what's extending, what's not, what's being repealed, what's not. By keeping our finger on the pulse, yep. we can understand how much blood and, and how aggressive that heartbeat is of the cash flow of, of the nation, which is through small business as well. And the more that we're aware of that as investors and as business owners, we can protect ourselves against when, when the pulse is weak and the stimulus is, is, is draining from us, in which case we need to keep ourselves on life support. But when it's pumping really hard through and there's a lot of stimulus out there, well, we need to be wary of a time where it's not, but we also need to be able to go, you know what, let's get in, let's ride this next wave. And that's the, why, the reason why I've said that we're, we're now in the, the, the season of stimulus, which is potentially the next financial year is between now and September. And then we recalibrate between September and December. And we 100%. keep shortening our time horizons. And I, I hate to say this because as an investor, you need to be long. But if you're looking at mobilizing into the market for opportunity and you want to be an opportunist, you need to be looking at the shorter term trends and going, okay, ent entry point is going to be important unless I'm dollar cost averaging. And dollar cost averaging means I'm putting in a $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, and, and does almost doesn't matter when. Yeah. 
yeah, markets wait, drop wait. because you're putting in mark money all over it. Yeah. So I think that we really, really need to be cognizant of it because it, otherwise there can be massive opportunity missed because we go, oh, we're in COVID times and the government drop a bomb of stimulus and, and we're always going, oh, no, because we're looking around and we're in lockdown where the reality is there's just been a year's worth of GDP dropped into a country and that is just going to go poof. And, yeah. uh, and I think we need to be super, super vigilant around that. Mate, I, I and completely agree. And, and certainly from a property investor's point of view, you know, you and I talk about this all the time. You call it a war chest. I call it a buffer. You know, uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's four to six months worth of war chest or buffer, you know, in your kitty, uh, whether you're a property investor or a business owner, you know, and, and, you know, structured correctly in that way, you know, whether it's in an offset account that you've got access to that the banks can't control or as a business owner, you know, in an account that uh, you're always in control of. And, you know, um, if things don't go your way, you can manage that uh, buffer, that war chest, you know, it's very prudent to be cashed up come September, irrelevant of what the government announces, you yeah. know, whether, whether they're going to soften it, whether they, like, I think they're going to soften it. They'd, like it, they'd be mad not to like, a, you know, I think that they have to mate. Have, have, yeah. we, have we seen any government in the world take a hard stance on anything? In, like, no, no, it's not going to happen. Think since Howard left, a <laughs> coward came in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Howard left, coward came in. Uh, and I'm not saying whether we should or not, but it's hard to imagine yeah. them turning the tap off aggressively. Yeah. yeah. Uh, super yeah. hard. 100%. Agree. But, you know, I think that's a good way to end tonight, which is be prudent with your cash, but be ready opportunistically. Um, whether you're a property investor, a business owner, or you want to deploy into the share market, you know, you've seen, you know, like you said, Andy's one is, you know, history doesn't repeat, but it's a great mimic, you know, where those stimulus are, you know, um, we can, uh, we can take advantage of that um, if we're ready and we're capable and we're got our heads screwed on right. So, you know, mate, uh, as always, fantastic to catch up and chat on a Friday night. Hopefully um, everyone who's been dialing in uh, has enjoyed tonight's conversation. Um, Jace is there saying, thanks, gents. So uh, good to see you, Jace. Um, and uh, thanks to everyone, Brian, Allison, Belinda, you know, all those who dialed in, Shay. Jono, um, Katie, Carol, Katie, Allison, Peter, <laughs> Jeremy. Everybody's hey. there, Lukey, hey. you know, um, lots of people. Nicole, you know, Tim, Allison, Rod, um, hopefully everyone's um, there. Damien, thanks, gang. Uh, listen, uh, like Andy and I have always said, uh, if you've got any questions, drop us a question in the chat. Maybe we won't get to it this week, but next week we'll uh, we'll keep that one in mind. So, um, you know, um, thanks for dialing in. It's always cool to debrief and decompress at the end of the week and hopefully add some value. That's uh, our goal here on our Wine and Wisdom Night to add some value, support people who are supporting others and, um, you know, make good decisions with your money. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, for, for most of us uh, sleep a little easier and uh, do things a little bit better than oh, we did yeah. a little while ago with uh, with information and uh, and uh, understanding. So you know, turn off the news for the rest of the weekend. In other words, that's what I would do. I I, I don't like the news. <laughs> but anyway, thanks, Andy. Mate, great to chat with you, brother. Um, cheers to everyone. Take care. Have a great weekend. Uh, I've got a date with my family and my wife out at my fire uh, just outside my office here. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully everyone has a great weekend and uh, take care. All the best, Andy. Chat, chat to you soon, brother. And to you, mate. All, All the right. best. See Have you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.